What is up my dashing dudes and darling dames? I am the Heinz TV and welcome back to the only subreddit that shows you that there should be a minimum IQ for owning a computer. It's r slash tales from tech support. Our first post for today comes from Tanika F. Why, oh why is the printer not working? Could it be because it's not actually on? I'm the youngest person in my office, which means I am designated tech support. We've got a very fancy printer too fancy in my opinion. It does way too much, way too poorly. But hey, I'm not paying for it. That my older colleagues assume I'm a wizard with. Basically, I'm the one who puts paper in it and orders ink. Wizard indeed. Today, older colleague one tries to print some things and it doesn't work. I'm on the phone so she goes to older colleague number two, who also goes to mess with the printer. It still doesn't work. They cluster next to my desk as soon as my call is done. Uh, Tanika F., you need to call the copier company right away. The printer isn't responding at all. It's just eating the orders and nothing comes out. We need it running ASAP. Dutiful receptionist that I am, I call her copier company. They say they'll send out a tech tonight and to go and turn off the machine until they get there so no more orders come through. I go to the printer room and see that the printer has, in fact, been turned off this whole time. The touchscreen is black and not responding because nobody pressed the big old power button this morning. I press the button and I tell coworker number one to try it again. And do you know what? Now the printer works. Once again, I am lauded as the tech wizard of the office. I don't think I'll tell them what the problem was, just in case I need a wizard day again. Hmm, I wonder why the lights aren't on for this printer. Oh, it's gotta be broken. Did you try turning it off and on? No, I didn't think about that. Our next post comes from a large meat feast. Paperwork for paperwork's sake. This is the tale of how I got the reputation of being a miracle worker. In 2014, I was the IT department of a timber furniture company based locally. They made tables, beds, desks, everything you could think of out of wood. I not only fixed the office computers, but also was a software developer and fixed the computer side of the large CNC machines on the factory floor. I was answering a support call one morning when I noticed that this was an actual flaw in the operating procedures. Essentially, pieces of ironmongery, any fasteners, latches, handles, hinges, screws, etc. that attach to the furniture could be ordered from us directly and shipped out. But there was no system to do this. The sales team found the item in our catalog, wrote the part numbers on a pre-printed form, and hand-delivered it to the stock office. Stock people then entered those numbers into the stock system, found the item, and sent it on yet another handwritten form to transport, who would then add it manually as a part load into the transport system for delivery. The support call was that the stock number didn't exist, so it must be a fault. As you can guess, someone had scruffy handwriting and made a six look like an eight. I went back to my office and started to add a module to our order management software to do exactly this. It took about three weeks, including testing, and I was just about to roll it out when I got an email inviting me to a Kaizen meeting. If you've not heard of one, it's basically part of the continual improvement cycle for manufacturing, based on a Japanese idea. The meetings are 15 minutes long, and you assign tasks and report on the resolved tasks. The initial meeting chooses roles, lays out the problem, and starts the ball rolling. Our version had a minimum resolution time of five weeks, one meeting a week. The last meeting was not meant to have a completed solution, but to know how to get the completed solution. I attended the first meeting and mentioned that I could have this resolved and working quickly. I knew what the issue was and how to resolve it. I didn't tell them I already had because I wanted to see where this was going. Naturally, I was told by the leader that we had to follow the rules of the meeting and that there would be five more after this one. I took a back seat except to answer questions about my areas of expertise. I played their game. The second meeting and the leader finds an expensive piece of software, 12,000 plus 2,000 per machine, that would do the job. We would need 20 licenses at least. I was asked to take a test demo copy. The third meeting. Software was actually quite easy to use and configure, but all machines using it needed to be on the latest version of Windows with the latest version of Office. On top of the software costs, the upgrade costs alone would have been expensive. Fourth meeting. I suggested using a Word template or a spreadsheet to enter the data digitally. That way it could be emailed and printed as a record. Fifth meeting. Everyone agreed that this would be good short term, but longer term specialist software was needed. I was asked to investigate if I could write it. Yes. Five meetings in, someone suggested using the IT department properly. It had not occurred to them until that point. The final meeting. I told them it would take me about five weeks without interruption in order to get this done. The meeting wrapped up, notes handed in, and filled in the official paperwork by hand to submit to management to show that we had been effective. I made small tweaks to the software that I had written five weeks ago in accordance with some minor things that they said they wanted. 
It took an afternoon. I then spent the next three workdays browsing Reddit and Imgur before pressing the deploy button. The following morning, I introduced the new stock tracking and ordering system to management, and they were amazed. We even won the prize for the most successful Kaizen. I mean, I guess it's lucky that you had already had that thing prepared and just had five weeks to, you know, mess with it and make it better. So good on you, OP. Good on you for being prepared. Our final post for today comes from Marsman Nexi. I don't care if it's not secure. So I'm working in first level tech support for a rather large governmental company that's working in the healthcare sector. We worked with many other smaller companies like the Red Cross or various elderly daycare centers, etc. And our company often exchanges confidential data with those companies. Most people in our company do it by sending password protective zip archives via email. I get a call, nothing strange so far. I pick up, say my generic greeting and wait till the person describes her problem. She says that if you right click on the protected file, the password appears. I told her that that is not possible since it's a third party application, which we cannot edit. And the most important part is that even if theoretically we would do it, that it would completely negate the security factor. She then began to rant about that we are all incompetent. I once again tried to calmly tell her that because of security concerns and because the application is third party that this wasn't possible. She completely ignored me and continued her rant. At this point I didn't know what to do and proposed that she can talk to my manager. She declined, wished me a good day in a very sarcastic way and hung up. It's not as spectacular as other stories but it still made my day because she didn't care about the security of health data of customers but only about making it easier for her because the passwords will be transmitted over a call with the receiving person. And this, my dear viewers, is exactly why there needs to be an IQ test to at least own a computer. Well, all right, my dashing dudes and darling dames, that's gonna do it for today's episode of r slash Tales from Tech Support. I hope you like the stories, and if you did, I'm gonna link them in the description as always. And if you like the video, subscribe, share, drop a like, and a comment down below with what you'd like to see me read next. I can't wait to see where the rest of this year takes us because the channel keeps on growing. And I am so glad that y'all keep on subscribing and keep on pushing out my videos. I cannot thank y'all enough for that. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.